Creativity is the heart of innovation. You can look around Young Living today and see hundreds of blends, household products, and more. But what you don't see is the trial and error and research and imagination that comes before each product. We all have that spirit of creativity in us, and today we are talking about letting your imagination run wild with different DIY projects you can make with the Young Living products you already love. Hello and welcome to Young Living's podcast, The Wild Drop. My name is Jacob Young, your host. Young Living is the world leader in producing and distributing premium essential oils, and this podcast will provide you with drops of information about Young Living, including stories, history, product information, lots of little fun facts, and even more. Today, we have Rita Morrill joining the show for the first time. Hello, Rita. Thank you. I'm doing great. It's really exciting for me, so thanks for having me. Super happy to have you. (laughs) And I guess for those who may not know who Rita is, Rita, would you like to explain who you are, what you do, and why you're here, and (laughs) all the above? (laughs) Yeah. So I'm Rita Morrill. I'm the Director of Field Development. So I work primarily with the U.S. and Canada, and I get to teach our brand partners how to use our products and then also leveraging the products for their business and that earning potential. So it's really fun. I get to travel out and and meet with them, and it's it's been life-changing. Well, what brought you to Young Living? Like, what brought you to the world of essential oils? Because obviously it's not a mainstream thing. It's not a common thing for people to get into. Like, for younger kids, they're like, oh, what do you want to be? Uh, it's not necessarily mm-hmm. what a kid would say. You know, usually yeah. it's a policeman or a fireman or a doctor. But uh, yes. being director of field development, wh- what has that been like for you, and what brought you into that? So I have a nutrition background, and so that's kind of my first step into the wellness world. I studied in college, studied nutrition and physiology of the body, and then I jumped into direct cells just as a health coach. And I actually started using essential oils before Young Living. My sister worked here in member services. Oh, so wow. Yeah, so she like got me my dewdrop diffuser, and like I started using some of the oils, but... I wasn't like jumping full in, like I wasn't too familiar. Mm -hmm. I was just diffusing. I didn't really know the health benefits. And then just gradually, I just used them more and more. And then I saw a job opening at Young Living and I was like, this is up my alley. I really want to be with a company that cares about wellness because that's what I'm passionate about. And took my first opportunity. I started interviewing and landed a job in training and development. So. Fantastic. That's my That's journey. Great to hear. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to hear that. I didn't know that your sister was in member services, mm-hmm. so that's awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, part of being in, uh, I guess, you know, training and development, what all does that cover and what all does that look like? So it's mostly product. Like when I started here, it was product, how to use it. Um, but then it kind of transitioned into speaking to it compliantly too because it we just want to make sure that we're sharing the benefits but also being careful a lot of people share on social media so we oh yeah (laughs) but it's really interesting because i get to meet with r&d before like a product launch and understand why we're using those ingredients why that quality matters um, and that storytelling the product positioning and then i get to teach that to brand partners and also customers and make it more simple because yeah. I feel like even with me, sometimes I meet with the scientists and I'm like, wow, that's like way over my head. So I get to learn from them, but then simplify it and teach people how to use it practically and daily in their lives. So. Fantastic. I think that's one of the <laughs> biggest issues I think a lot of people have is they see a new product and they understand to some extent how it works, but they don't understand the why behind it mm-hmm. uh, as far as like how the product itself or why the product Uh, was developed the way that it was and so I think it's absolutely crucial that you go and spread that and share it with everybody else and you're right it it is a little bit tricky because you know our R&D team the scientists they always talk in these big broad terms and you're like fascinating I have no (laughs) idea what that means I'm not gonna remember that Uh, can you simplify (laughs) English and uh, the it's great that you're you're doing that because that's one. I feel like that's one of the trickiest parts is being able to explain it well enough that somebody can understand it. There's a saying that I came across recently that if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. Mm, so I like that. the fact that you can explain it simply means that you know it well yes. enough. So that's really good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so for those of you that may not understand something well enough, 
or can't <laughs> seem to explain it well enough, get to know it, get to understand it, get to learn it. There's a lot out there. Uh, there's plenty of episodes here on the podcast if you're wanting to learn more about the product specifically as well. So sometimes, sometimes I tell brand partners, we want to sit down and tell someone everything we know about a specific oil or a mm -hmm. supplement. And at a certain point, people might not be retaining that information. Yeah. And so you've got to pick those like key points of why you love it and how you've seen it change your life and not feel like you need to sit them down and lay everything out, all the facts. Yeah. We, we can't keep it simple. Yeah, just the really important tidbits, right? The, mm -hmm. the crucial information, uh, kind of like a, uh, a flashcard, right? That's the best way to explain something uh, as far as products or essential oils go to somebody is like a flashcard and how much can you fit on that flashcard? Because the our essential oils and our products have so many benefits, so many uses. It's we'll be here for <laughs> yeah. years and years and years if we go through all of them. But if you really want to do a deep dive, there are great avenues, great routes to go down to. Mm -hmm. You can go onto the website. You can reach out to some of our scientists. Chris Powerbank posts a lot and some in-depth science about our products and essential oils on his Facebook. Um, so if anyone's fantastic. coming to convention, the expo is so fun and you can meet the farm team, um, our product development team. It's really fun. It's a and great way to learn. You can ask them any question. They don't get scared. Sometimes they get scared, but you can still <laughs> ask them all the questions that you want. Well, fantastic. I'm, I'm really happy that you brought up convention because it is so worthwhile to come to. It's there's nothing like being in person and just being able to chat, communicate, network, and, and just be with a with a great community and just have a blast. It's a great time. It's it really, like our really Super Bowl. Is. Like yeah. we are all waiting like anxiously to, for everyone to get here and lots of planning happening right now. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so with you being the knowledge expert that you are <laughs> and knowing everything that there is to do or how to use a product. You probably can share with some people a few different ways that they can use essential oils in a fun way, in, I guess, a DIY way, yes. if you want to call it. Absolutely. So I like looking at it as you look in your home and see like just the small things you can switch for natural products, but some of those things really can be fun. Like one that comes to mind is perfumes. Like everyone, as far as like all my friends, use a perfume and in my experience, once you start going a little more natural, you're, you can be sensitive to those synthetic fragrances, those heavy chemicals. And so you can walk into the mall and if you go into the fragrance section, like I, it's uncomfortable I, for me. I can't do it. I walk past certain like uh, bath bomb places and candle wax places and I get a massive microphone. I can yep. nearly smell them across halfway, like halfway through the mall. That's how strong it is for me. And yep. uh, kind of a little side note, but that's actually one of the reasons why we created Simplified as well. Yes. Was uh, that healthy ditch and switch oh. for candles and waxes and air fresheners. That brings up a good point because I was going to talk about making a perfume. Like I think that's a really simple way to maybe ditch one thing. Mm -hmm. And we have so many scents that you can customize it without those heavy chemicals. And also your skin is the largest organ in your body. And so you're applying that topically. Yeah. And Simplified is actually an easier route, too, because it's already the, blended for you. the easy button. Yes. <laughs> I'm a fan of pink champagne. I, and I know a lot of people just put a roller bottle on, and we're using it as our perfume. And big fan. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but making a perfume is just one example. It's super easy. And in the perfume industry, they use, like, top notes, middle notes, base notes. And so you can use our oils and, like, differentiate between mm -hmm. maybe something you want that's bright, like lemon or orange would be your top note because that's what you smell first and it's bright. And then maybe your base note's a little heavier, like sandalwood or vetiver, a little more musky, and that's going to linger longer. So you can just play around with those scents and customize a perfume and not worry about those harsh chemicals. So that's just like one idea. I love doing that. And I saw a brand partner in California. They actually had like a big party and they were adding flower petals, like crystals wow. to their yeah, to their okay. perfumes to make it like seem more elegant. So I oh, thought that was so fun. That's fantastic. I love that there's so many different ways that you can create a perfume. Obviously, we have so many options of oils. So it's basically pick and choose. Whatever you think you can create, you obviously can't create it because you have plenty of ingredients to do so. Mm -hmm. That might be a little bit too intricate for some people. So what's like a very simple, off the top of your head recipe, DIY type recipe that you can think of right now that we can actually teach our listeners? 
So one that's a mix of, if you like lavender, this is a really good I one. Love <laughs> if you want to balance it with something like more warm, lavender and vanilla are perfect. You can do equal parts. Or you can do a little more lavender. If you're doing a 10 ml, it's about 30 drops. Mm -hmm. So you would do maybe 20 drops of lavender, 10 drops of vanilla. And the vanilla balances out those floral notes. And it's beautiful. That one might make you go to sleep because it's that dreamy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but it's so good. Just thinking that's... about it does make me feel a little sleepy. That's true. <laughs> but yeah. for summer, citrus oils. That's what I would do. Yeah. I love grapefruit in a perfume. I had a friend do patchouli and grapefruit. That one's really easy, adding lime, orange, and those are some also affordable oils. Yeah. So citrus oils, and then vanilla balances it out if you want it to be more creamsicle. We have a creamsicle, simplified too. We do, so. <laughs> and it's coming back. It's coming back very soon. Yay. The summer set. All the That's... sets that we've already gone through, they'll be coming around one more time yes. for the last two raw, and then 2024 will be all brand new. Oh, love that. Yeah. And one other one I just discovered this week, actually. Okay. I made one with jasmine, lime, and vanilla. Mm, heavier, that's a good combo. Heavier jasmine. I think it was for 10 ml, it'd be like 10 drops, and then five of lime and five of vanilla, depending on the bottle. But it's amazing. It's really floral, but then you kind of get everything in it. Yeah. So. So we talked about perfume DIYs. Are there any other fun DIYs that you can think of? Maybe like, you know, my favorite DIY uh, is the Ningxia Bomb. And uh, everybody kind of has their own rendition of, of the Ningxia Bomb. Uh, for me, my Ningxia Bomb is uh, nitro, a packet of Ningxia Red, full can of Zing. And then I personally really like to do two drops of Jade Lemon mm, and one drop yeah. of Cinnamon. And Ooh. it just gives it a really sweet spicy, uh, just kind of like a, a zesty zing flavor to it. That's cool. And it's really, really, I, I like it. Some people don't. I know Prasad Gonkanda, our chief operating officer, his favorite thing in the whole wide world is he takes the Jade Berry Vitality Drops and he adds Ooh, a little I bit of squirt those. into his zing and mixes it around. And that's like his go-to thing. I love the energy drops. I yeah. use those every day. Yeah, for the Ningxia Bombs, I think I mostly do lime and grapefruit. Ooh, but that's I, a good combo. And I like Zing by itself, too. Honestly, mm -hmm. I can just have a Zing by itself. But that's fantastic. it's really fun to enhance the flavors, yeah. I think. Talking about enhancing flavors and it being summer and it being really hot, are, have you seen any DIYs from our brand partners when it comes to like maybe adding Vitality Drops to their ice cream or something like that? Yes, I've seen people do a lot with Lavender Vitality. Really great benefits for that oil, but Lavender like ice cream. I've seen Lavender Lemonade some, for summertime for any like barbecue. That's perfect oh, because yeah. make up your fresh lemonade, add Lavender Vitality and add a little bit of honey or agave. So that's a really good one. Are there any DIYs for like little kids um, that that they could share with, that they could make for their little kids or anything like that? Are there any fun little ones you can do there? I just saw a group of brand partners do a party where they did Play-Doh, like natural Play-Doh, and they added essential oils. And I think it's on our blog. I think we have a recipe on our blog. Fantastic. So, so the blog that you're talking about, go ahead and explain how someone can find that blog. So it's called Lavender Life Blog. And then on there, you can search key terms. There's also different categories. And we have a Pinterest account. And I have not been using that Ooh. enough, but I've been sharing that on almost all of my calls because they're, they're really organized well. There's folders for DIYs. There's, and then even deeper, there's folders for perfume recipes, for um, room sprays, for thieves DIYs. It's amazing. Like everyone has to check out the Pinterest. So it has everything and everything. Yes. And, and is the Pinterest the same, the Lavender Life? No, it's just Young Living Essential Oils when you search it. And then Easy. we have our own account with all the recipes. And it makes it nice because let's just say you're hosting an event at your house. You can you just go to Pinterest yep. and just share. And just pull I love it. it. Fantastic. Yeah. What a great way to do that. Yeah. So for those of you that would be interested in visiting the Pinterest or the blog, we will have the links for both of those in the description of the YouTube video for this podcast down below. So come on over to YouTube, leave us a like, leave us a follow, you know, do your thing over here or, or, or just <laughs> click on the link and then go to the link. That's fine too. Um, but obviously with, with all this DIY stuff, there had to be something that just made you want to create more, to explore more. Was there kind of like <laughs> was there like a gateway, a gateway DIY, a gateway <laughs> DIY thing for you? Like that opened you up into this world of wanting to do more DIY and wanting to share and do more things? 
Yes. It all came back to one story I can think of. And someone had gifted me some bath salt. And I think it was maybe eucalyptus or it had some scent already Uh infused in it. And I was just learning about essential oils. So I wasn't too worried about all having all natural products. So I was just like, well, great. This is a gift. I'm going to use it. It's going to be relaxing bath time. I love baths. And I went downstairs to make a cup of tea. And as I'm coming up the stairs, because the bath's going and getting ready, I started smelling like something super strong. And I like at the time, I guess I forgot I was going to get in the bath. I'm like, what is that smell? Mm -hmm. It's so strong. And as I got closer, I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's like these eucalyptus salts. And like it's started giving me a headache. Like fast. Oh, wow. And that was the first time where I noticed that correlation between a synthetic fragrance and what it was doing to my body and how I, my body was manifesting. It was not liking that that scent. So from then on, I was like, I think I can do this by myself. And I already have a few oils. And so I looked up a recipe and just from then on, like, I just make my own. It's affordable and it's so fun to choose our oils. And it's actually really good for your body, too. There's two things that I got from that. One is that bath bombs were your gateway into the world of DIY. And the second one was that you learned that synthetics actually affect your chemistry for the way that your brain uh, Mm -hmm. receives smells and stuff like that. And it's fantastic that that's what brought you into the world of natural essential oils into organic essential oils or kind of led you into that path and now you understand why you were getting a massive headache from that and why they're obviously not good for you anymore yeah and i that's just like one of my favorite parts about young living is we always are talking about a healthier lifestyle healthier Mm -hmm. mindset and i i think it's fantastic that we have so many products that can cover all of your bases all of your needs all of your wants all of your desires and uh, there's so much that you can do with them, so many DIY, so many fun product projects that you can get into, and just a really fun, creative world to explore and just yeah. be your inner child like you were playing out in the backyard again with all the dirt, except yes. essential oils and you're an adult <laughs> now. So, <laughs> And it's all about bringing awareness. Like, yeah. And I, I, that's what I love doing is all of us, I feel like especially internally as employees, like because we get to use the products a lot and learn about them, then we get to go out in the world and share that and bring awareness to people. And and especially when you have kids, I have a four-year-old daughter, so I'm happy that she's already learning how to use her kids' sense oils. Yeah. And also, like, the products I'm using, like, I'm exposing her to that. And she has a really little body, and we want to be careful with what we're using around them. And so she's already on her journey of yeah. wellness and using oils. Yeah. Obviously, you want to make sure that when introducing kids that you're being... Uh, attentive and watching the oils yes. that they are used because there are some oils that are really hot, you know, like oregano and peppermint and cinnamon bark. Um, and everybody's skin is also very different. Mm-hmm. So when you're sharing the oils with family or friends or, you know, your little ones, just pay attention to how they react. We usually say like a drop on the back of the hand just to see how their skin reacts to it because. Like we said, everybody is different. Everybody's skin is different. So some people may not react uh, as well as others do. And some people may, some people's bodies may not like a certain oil, but they like others as well. It all really depends. Mm -hmm. So when you're wanting to share, when you're wanting to do a fun DIY project and you're wanting to share with others, just keep that in mind, you know, be attentive, be aware and uh, use responsibly. I know that sounds weird to say, but use (laughs) Use use responsibly. When in doubt, dilute. That's what we always say. Like always dilute those oils With and do like a little patch test. Yep. Yep. So it's a great way to do it. Well, I guess uh, one last thing would be obviously we we're kind of on this topic already, but when doing DIY stuff and when sharing with other people, what are some of the, the key bullet points that you can think of uh, that you would share with others? I would say keep it simple. Like pick a few things as far as supplies go. Like don't overthink it and also have fun with it. I feel like it's a really awesome way to show like what you're passionate about, what oils you love and play around with maybe like try one new recipe a month and maybe you don't love how it turned out the first time, like try it again and 
It's it's really so fun. I love doing DIYs um, with our thieves line. We didn't talk about that, but you can do something like a stain stick. Things that you're using every single day. I it's did just, a stain stick recently. It worked really well, actually. So are you talking about the mud? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So um, I can't remember who it was specifically, but they had shared a video on Facebook, and uh, they were talking about how the dish soap works really well as a stain stick, mm-hmm. and I was like no way that's crazy and so i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna have some fun with this i'm gonna make a challenge and i want to see like the dirtiest like i want to see people get really dirty (laughs) and see just how power like i know thieves is really powerful but i wanted to make it really fun i wanted to kind of share the love and just make it fun for everybody else and it also really helps kind of spread awareness for a product i think a lot of our brand partners and customers and people in general know how powerful our products are, mm-hmm. but it also helps that much more just to show the actual power um, and the potential that that product has as well. So we went down to the farm and it was 33 degrees that day. Oh, And no. they're like, so Jacob, you know, cause uh, we had Mike and Ren Sofe down there. They were with the film crew and we were kind of talking about like, okay, like how dirty do you want to get? I was <laughs> like, I have full confidence in thieves, so I will get as dirty as I need to. So we walked around the farm and we found this like massive mud pit. And then it was also kind of mixed in with like the horse manure and stuff too. (laughs) And so I was full on board, ready to go. And actually was like going to pretend, uh, pretend like fake and slip in the mud and all that kind of stuff. I also had a Harley, my dog with me down there and we were playing fetch. And so I went to go grab her ball and... That's actually how I slept. So and this fell. is real. Like this was a <laughs> as embarrassing as it is to admit and say, yes, it was real. And so I was like, well, we're down here. Might as well roll around in it and get really dirty to show that it is a great cleaning solution and it does work super well. And you saw, and I don't know if you saw some of the uh, contestants' videos, but my favorite video by far was this kid. Um, it was I can't remember her name, Tammy. But Tammy's son, uh, whose name I forgot, he, (laughs) I don't know what he did, but he was covered head to toe, front to back, all the way around in mud with a pine cone stuck on top of his head. (laughs) It was my favorite video by far. My favorite video by far. I absolutely loved it. But all the videos that we, that were submitted were great videos. Fantastic. So round of applause to everybody on that part. Really appreciate you just sharing love. They were so fun to watch. Yeah. And so that was like, that was a really fun DIY. I really didn't like know that dish soap also would help with some of the stain sticks and whatnot. And I guess another DIY, for those of you who may not know, I actually used to do mobile detailing with a buddy of mine. We had a mobile detailing That's what my dad's business is. That's so funny. And we actually would use lemon essential oil all the time for really heavy stains, for residue from like stickers, or we would add it into our soap to spray on the outside as well to help remove heavy decontaminants. Uh, from the paint and stuff you have to be so it didn't mess up the paint you have to be really 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 careful because thieves lemon and citrus they're really really strong and they'll eat away inorganic material so the way that we did it to kind of see how much we could use and what our perfect ratio was and it was usually water and then a few drops of uh, citrus and lemon and then thieves as well mixed together The way that we would test to make sure that it wasn't stripping paint, stripping material, is we'd actually go to a pick apart. I don't know if you're familiar with a pick apart. Basically, they have a ton of wreck cards in mm. this like wreckage yard, and then you can buy hoods, seats. You, literally, if you can take the car apart and you can take it out of the car, they just weigh it and then you pay it based off the weight or you pay it based off the part. So we went and bought a ton of hoods, a ton of seats, and just tested all sorts of different types of materials and paints and whatnot, cool. see what it would bring back, see what it would restore. And obviously, you know, I don't want to share my perfect ratio because <laughs> that, well, I'm not in business we anymore, it. but I'm it put me out of business, right? <laughs> um, but I'll definitely have to go, I can't remember the exact ratio, but um, I'll go back into my notes and we can have another podcast episode and we can talk about what that perfect <laughs> ratio is. So if, if some of you would like to actually do detailing on your cars with our products, we can. There's we can, a top secret yeah. recipe that we're yeah. all dying for. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I try to, to work with R&D on it, but they're like, eh, it probably wouldn't be a, risky a, business. a top seller. And I was like, OK, fine, whatever. So we'll that's have to save that for so, another episode. That's though. so cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. My Honestly, favorite way to use lemon, though, ooh. is 
so my daughter's four and she mm-hmm. wears those like elastics in her hair. And oh, sometimes you yes. have like multiple. Just put a little bit on the elastic and it snaps right off. It, it saves does. so much time. The girls aren't crying if it pulls their hair. That's my favorite way by far. Yeah, and it makes the hair smell good. Actually rejuvenates the hair a little bit, you know, yep. makes it fresh. So We love lemon. Yeah. You have to have it. It's fantastic. <laughs> Obviously, there's so many ways that you can do DIY, that you can Mm -hmm. use our essential oils, that you can use our products. So I'm going to make a quick call to action here. For those of you that have a really fun DIY using our products that maybe people haven't seen before, put it out there on social media. We'd love to see it. We'd love to share it. Maybe I'll share it on my stories and whatnot. So use the hashtag YLDIY you know, with your next DIY post for however long you want. I would just love to see some of the DIYs that are out there. I've seen some, but I'm sure I have not seen them all. So please make sure to use that hashtag YLDIY. And if you're watching over here on YouTube, leave some of your DIY suggestions, maybe in the comments. Would love to see them. You know, even though I've been in this company and been using the products my entire life, there's obviously stuff (laughs) I have not tried yet. And that's kind of the great part about this DIY stuff is in a way, I I think about it like embracing my dad in a way because everything that he did was was new and it was in his own way like trial and error. He was trying something that was new for him and a lot of it kind of was like DIY if you think about it, right? It's something new that no one else has tried before Mm -hmm. that you want to share with others and he found success in it and there was obviously trial and error in it, but there was a success story behind it. And uh, that's the great part about it is yeah. it's, it's really fun and it's fun to share. And that's what we do here. We, we share the success. We share the love. We share the passion. It's such a community. And I love that you're talking about innovation. Like your dad kind of helped us all be innovative in our own ways, in our own homes. Yeah. So it's really fun. And I love that Young Living is a community. Like we all share recipes and get together. And it's never like, no, you can't have my perfume recipe. It's secret. Like we want everyone to use these products yeah. and enjoy them. So Well, my thieves cleaning recipe is still secret. That's but, true. Okay. But I'll share it. I'll share it eventually. I want it I I need to go back to my notes and I need to find like the exact amount because like I said, the lemon and the citrus and the thieves, it can be really strong. You have to be really careful. <laughs> You know, the pick apart is kind of like, you know, doing the drop application on the back of your hand, make sure that it works well, yes. you know, making sure that it's uh, that your skin reacts correctly to it, you know. So, the pick apart is the the exact same thing in a yes. sense. So you have to test them because our oils are so potent and strong, and it's, we don't it's use fillers. Like they're the best quality that's out I there. I would definitely say yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rita, thank you so much for your time, your knowledge, your passion, and sharing everything. Once again, we also have the Pinterest for all of this DIY stuff that we've been talking about. We will have the links in the description for the YouTube video for this podcast episode. So come on over and check it out. And once again, we really appreciate you having. Thank you, you so come much. It's been so fun. So oh, fun yeah. to chat about things we love. It's easy. <laughs> very, very easy. And we'll have to have you on the show once again. That sounds great. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for tuning into this episode of The Wild Drop. Remember, you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, on YouTube, and of course, our website at www.youngliving.com. Don't forget to oil up Young Living family. This is Jacob Young, dropping out. Take care.